So we're at, a, at an existing deck, and the question is, is this deck uh, safely constructed, or are we, do we have some problems that, that the homeowner should be concerned about? Well, what I look at when I walk up to a, to a deck to inspect it, the first thing I'm wor always worried about is how is the deck connected to the house? So in this particular instance, we see that we have an overhang from the house wall to the deck. So this always, to me, is a bit of a concern because the way that the deck is attached to the house is through this ledger board, which I'm pointing to with my tape measure up here. Um, we see that we have the ledger board is attached with nails at this location. We can see three nails and we see a couple of bolts. For example, there's one bolt here. The head of the bolt can be seen and then I look all the way over to here to, before I can find the next bolt. And so I measure that and I can see that it's approximately 48 inches between the two between these two bolts. Um, in the research that we've done at the laboratory at the university, we found that really for a span of, uh, for decks which are spanning about 10 feet, such as this deck, these bolts should be spaced approximately 16 inches on center. And instead we have bolts spaced 48 inches on center. I assume that these nails are ineffective. In our research at the laboratory, we found that, the, that uh, just holding the deck to the house with nails alone uh, is simply not sufficient and this has caused many deck failures in the field. So homeowners who can find no bolts or insufficient bolts or lag screws such as this, these by the way could be lag screws, uh, really should look into how into reattaching this deck with some more fasteners. So another thing I look at when I'm inspecting a deck are, is how are the joists connected to the ledger board. In this particular deck we see that we have a 2x4 that uh, is supporting a notch um, for, uh, in each of these joists. And this may work, however, we see that the 2x4 is only nailed in to the ledger board. So um, a better way to do this would be to have joist hangers, which are attaching the joist directly to the ledger board. Other things that I look for on a deck uh, such as this is how, uh, how, how is the ledger board uh, attached to the house and is it correctly flashed. Flashing, of course, is, is a non-corrosive metal which is designed to direct water away from that joint. Typically the ledger board of a deck is made of pressure treated wood so it will not decay. However, the house components that the ledger board is attached to is typically made from non-pressure treated wood. So if the flashing is not sufficient and moisture can get in between that interface, um, the house components can start to decay and then whatever the bolts are or lag screws which are attached between the, uh, such as this bolt here, which is attaching the ledger board into the house, it may actually be in rotted wood in the house component. So this is something else which, uh, which needs to be uh, inspected is how is that flashing um, condition uh, and that would be best done from above the deck or on the deck surface. Okay, another thing which I look for when I'm inspecting a deck and a homeowner can also uh, look for in their own deck is how are the uh, girders attached to the post. And in this case we can see we have two bolts um, which are uh, attaching that girder to the post but also there is a notch which is, uh, the, the post itself is notched which is let, so it has a let in area so that the girder is actually bearing in a wood to wood uh, context and that's very uh, strong connection um, so I think that's that on this deck that is not much of a problem, not any problem. Another thing which I always look for is how are the joists attached to the girder. So in this case I can see that we've got in some cases, for example here, uh, a toenail which is um, nailed into, from, through the girder and into the joist, but I do not see fasteners on the other joists. So this is a situation that a homeowner may want to come and uh, reinforce that connection, perhaps using a metal clip, which I will show you uh, later, or, uh, um, which can be attached uh, between the joist and the girder element itself. Another part of the deck which a homeowner should inspect, because it is critical to the safety of the deck, is the guardrail system. So if we look at this guardrail on this house, on this house deck, uh, we see that we have pickets which are nailed to the bottom rail and the top rail. Um, the connection of that picket to the rail must be strong enough to keep people from falling through. We can see we have three nails uh, holding this in. Screws might be better. Another thing to look for is the spacing between the pickets. The spacing should be no more than four inches. And also the spacing between the bottom of the rail and the top surface of the deck should also be no more than four inches. And this is designed to keep children from falling through um, to, to, uh, for safety purposes. 
Another thing to look for in, in the deck is the, the type of post which is holding the whole guardrail uh, up and which is attaching the, the guardrail system into the deck. In this case, we can see that we have three bolts and all three of these appear to be corroded. Um, I'm not sure this would be a sufficient connection. There are better ways to do it. Uh, this particular post is, uh, is two inches uh, by six inch, so it's a two by six inch um, guardrail post. And a much better way is to use a four by four, which is rigidly bolted to the, uh, the, lead, the band joist of the deck and to use a particular type of fastener, which then connects the band joist of the deck to the joist of the house, again, through bolts. And in the laboratory, we have tested these types of connections and found that uh, the connector that we are, I will show you uh, in a later segment, um, is really the strongest and best way to connect um, guardrail uh, posts to decks. Um, we found that testing, when we test these types of uh, systems, which we do in the laboratory, uh, we have yet to find one of these which actually can meet the building code requirements for the load, um, the load carrying capacity of a guardrail system. And I think that's it for this deck. Those are the major things that I like to look for.